Yeah, as um, Francesca just said, my name is Martin Bates and I work for an organization called um, Pure Insights. And um, we're kind of just in the enterprise search business. And in particular, looking at um, ways we can enhance the traditional search with uh, technologies like um, um, <clears throat> natural language processing, uh, AI technologies, and, and, and knowledge graphs. And what I'd like to uh, do today is just um, talk to you about a, a proof of concept that we did at the uh, Publications Office of the uh, European Union. Um, <clears throat> so, um, what we did is we, um, we put together this proof of concept that kind of demonstrated to the, uh, the visitors of the, the portal of the, um, the Publications Office of the European Union, um, you know, how they could actually answer uh, uh, or ask uh, natural language type queries and get answers in a similar fashion as you would to, to Google. And, um, and then as we go through the presentation, I'll show you how we did that by adding um, the, uh, a dense vector search capability to their, their existing um, Elastic instance. So the ability to answer questions with a, with a search engine um, it has gone by a number of different names. And you, you may have heard of um, semantic search, you may have heard of cognitive search, and more recently, vector search, um, you know, named due to the, the underlying technology that it uses. Um, for the purposes of this presentation, I'll use the, uh, the term semantic search. And really what they do is they all use um, natural language sort of processing, so NLP um, capabilities, to enable semantic understanding. Um, they also use elements of machine learning and also potentially knowledge graphs as well. So um, you, you're probably aware that uh, Google uses a knowledge graph alongside its, uh, you know, its search capability. So it's got a knowledge graph with you know, billions of nodes and it tends to use that graph when it feels it's got a, um, you know, uh, the definitive answer to a question and will pull it from the knowledge graph rather than, than use a search area. So yeah, so that's really, they all come together and provide this kind of semantic search type experience. But uh, if you've been in the industry as long as I have, um, then you'll probably know that this kind of technology or semantic search has been talked about for a long time, maybe over sort of you know, 20 years or more. So why haven't we really been able to deliver on the promise of semantic search until now? Because it really has come to the forefront and it really is being used and you, you can see it obviously in, in Google and on a day-to-day -day basis. So if we take a look at this, um, this graph here, um, what we have along the x-axis is, uh, is time and the y-axis, um, business impact or maybe the efficiency and effectiveness of um, some of these technologies on the left-hand side. And um, kind of graphed in that way, you can see that there is this kind of, in the top right-hand corner, this coming together or this convergence of these technologies. And it's largely due to this that we're now able to um, you know, move forward with um, semantic search type um, features and functionality. So we have machine learning. Um, you know, machine learning algorithms are beginning to come out of universities and academia now into industry and um, they are enabling advanced capabilities. Uh, neural AI models um, have significantly enhanced um, natural language understanding. Um, and then we have um, um, you know, cloud, cloud computing, which almost you know, feels or you look like um, infinite sort of computer capacity, um, which enables then us to do things like the, um, the, the, the AI type uh, models or, or bring them into practice. And also big data. So there are large data sets now out there um, that um, we can use, to, we can sort of um, process that content, analyze it and, uh, and use it for, for learning purposes. So it's almost like a serendipitous type moment, if you like, that these technologies have come together and, and you know, it's, it's, it's enab enabled us to then go and do this sort of semantic type functionality within the uh, with an enterprise search environment. So having set the scene, a little bit about the, uh, uh, the Publications Office of the European Union. So they're based in uh, Luxembourg. They have about um, 600 staff. And um, this is their mission. So 
as such, they uh, kind of in charge or they manage, look after the, you know, all the publications um, within the um, European Union Agency. Um, they're also sort of a central point of access. So they have a portal that allows um, people to come in and search for um, different types of data and data sets. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, that on the, on the next slide that I have here. Um, and also, um, you know, they, they ensure that this kind of broad range of information is available to the public, which um, makes it kind of transparent. And there's this um, idea of this diffusion of knowledge as well. So people that can come into the portal, they can access this information, access the knowledge, uh, analyze it and use it <coughs> in ways that they wish. And so here are some of the data sets that um, they have that we, you know, we, we had to uh, kind of or dealt with with this, uh, with, this, with this particular proof of concept, with this project. So a lot of information around law, um, a lot of European data, they call it, data sets from dis different sort of countries and EU institutions, um, public procurement as well, so sort of contract information, um, any kind of uh, RFI type thing that the European Union are doing will be all available here too. Um, and of course, they're a big um, publications house as well, so they, they produce their own uh, publications. Um, I mean, just I think there's about over 200,000 sort of publications that, that are available here. And, and the law data set as well itself actually is, is kind of over a million records as well. And that, that, there's an added dimension of complexity to this as well, which I'll talk about again in a moment. Research innovation and also EU who is who. So, um, you know, directory of the institutions that, that make it, make up the, the kind of the EU who is who within those, those places as well. So there's a lot of sort of activity going on here, kind of a lot of data that we had to deal with. Um, and this really shows a, um, a kind of a, a rendition of the Elasticsearch instance that the, the users see. You can see that on the, uh, on the left-hand side. Uh, at the back end, they're using um, Oracle RDF as, the, uh, as a data store. Uh, and then that is being rendered and mapped into a Elasticsearch index. So that's how they, they kind of, and sort of chunks of text then are kind of coming through. Um, metadata, everything they kind of need to enable um, the keyword type functionality that they currently have within the, uh, within the portal itself. And then here's the kind of the um, dimensional level of complexity I mentioned. So on the right hand side, you can see that um, there's a rendition of a particular document. On the left hand side, there are multiple renditions of the same document. So um, one of the things they you know, have to consider here is that there are around, well, at the time I put the slide together, 24 EU languages. Um, a lot of these documents are actually rendered into different languages. Um, you know, it could be as many as 24, might not be as many as that. And then there are different formats as well. So HTML, PDF, official journal, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see that this is kind of a, uh, a com complex sort of um, data set that is, 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 is kind of growing and moving kind of all the time. So um, the publications office, um, they, they started to, to see a trend that is um, you know, also seen by Google. And that is that um, more and more of the queries that were coming in uh, that people were, were asking when, were now fully formed questions. So not really keyword type searches, but questions that they expected to get an answer to. Uh, and again, I mean, it's probably more than this, but time of putting this slide together, um, approximately 12% of all Google queries are now questions. And What's the year on that? Yeah, you know, when I put the slide together, I, I, didn't, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't clock that, and I should have done. And that's why I said at the time of putting the slide together. <laughs> that's a great spot. But yeah, I think actually, um, I th it, it, is, it is two or three years old, so it's probably more than that now, yeah. But, um, and I suppose, you know, we, we kind of expect it now, I do. Um, you go to Google, you, you type in a um, you know, fully formed natural language query and you expect to get a, you know, a, a good answer back. And this, this behavior, if you like, that, um, that, that was seen in Google was now coming through into the publications office. Um, so that's really why they, um, they 
they kind of felt that they needed to do something about that. And, uh, you know, luckily enough, Elasticsearch has provided a kind of robust method to achieve this, to, to do something similar uh, with the, uh, you know, their, their dense vector support. So we get to hear this a lot. Um, so we, you know, operate as a consultancy. We talk to people and they just sort of say to us, well, can't you just make it work like Google? So that's what we that's what we kind of that's what we kind of try and do, I suppose, is we try and build um, enterprise solutions that, or, or even sort of you know even um, uh, web web facing solutions as well that are try to emulate the way that, that Google can work. And so um, just to kind of bring the point out on that, um, what I'll do is I'll just do a few kind of Googles. Google searches, just to kind of set the scene before I'll go into then the um, Elasticsearch kind of demo that we'd, um, <coughs> or instance that we'd, we'd, we'd built for them. So I've got to line through to our support servers. So hopefully we'll be, we'll be good with that. But if I just um, um, sort of ask Google a question, so um, what is the publication, you, <coughs> the, uh, the EU Publications Office mission? Um, we get, um, as you're probably aware, you know, back a featured snippet. So, um, and you know, you, they don't hide the fact here, you know, more about featured snippets. So this is a featured snippet. So they've gone into actually the European Union's data set itself. They've identified within um, that data set a, a document that they feel has, you know, the correct answer to what we're, we're looking for. And it brings that back to us in this form of this featured snippet or what the industry is now referring to more and more as a extractive answers. So they're going into documents and they're extracting an answer out and they say, and it's, it's, you know, it's way above the, um, the normal sort of search results or hit list as you would normally expect. If I just illustrate that with another, um, another example. So in which country is the European Union Publications Office? Um, now this time it's brought back the snippet, again it's a featured snippet, it's, it said that, but I don't know if you can see that too well, but it's actually highlighted Luxembourg. So this time it's brought it back, it's understood you know, what we're looking for, it's found within the snippet the exact answer that we, we require and it's highlighted it. And um, this is a really you know, good example of, um, of how the, kind of the, the back, back end technologies that they're using the natural language understanding, um, you know, Google, BERT, etc., um, to bring out this uh, this this type of functionality, and this is, you know, exactly what the uh, the kind of the um, publications office were looking for was was this type of thing. And it just actually, just to illustrate one other, um, so what is the capital of Germany? So we're all really familiar with this. We know that if we go to Google, we ask you what the capital of Germany is, it's going to come back and tell us it's Berlin. And you can see um, actually here that this isn't the featured snippet, so it's not there. But what it is, is you've, up here, you've got the kind of a, a node, which is Germany, an attribute, which is capital, and an answer, which is Berlin. So this has come from its knowledge graph. So it's computed. It said that it's, it has a sort of um, a very, very high level of confidence that it's able to bring back the exact answer here. So rather than using the search engine, it's gone to the knowledge graph and it's looked for the, uh, the node and attribute and found the answer and, and brought it back to us. <clears throat> and then one last um, example here where we'll go kind of, kind of very deep in. Um, so we're going this again has come from the data set of the European Union. It's actually very buried deep into the data set of the, of the European Union. Um, <clears throat> and we've asked about a, um, a specific law case here. So we're looking for a case where Phil Collins was involved. And um, what we've answered is, um, you know, when, when was this case um, <coughs> um, kind of concluded? And it's come back and it said that um, it's, it's given us the, uh, the judgment of the court said that on the 20th, it was the 20th of October 1993. So again, we've, you can see this um, 
natural language processing, the semantic expansion here, where it's understood that the judgment of the court was what we were looking for, as in what was the date when this thing was um, kind of kind of came through. So this is kind of you know what we expect, and we've we, we, we just come to to come to deal with it. Um, so what I've got here is actually a um, a demo. Um, if I take that actually that same same search clue that we used just there with Google. So this is um, this is our this is our proof of concept, the demonstration that we put together for the um, for the European Union. And um, we've asked it the same question as we've just answered Google, and you know we've managed to get back very similar format and the same answer in the exact same way. So in the same way, we've um, again this is all using the, the dense um, vector capability within Elasticsearch. We've highlighted the 20th of October and we've also brought it out of the snippet as well. Um, and if I just ask and just um, use a couple of more kind of search clues here just to show you the power of this. Um, so here we're looking for um, ethylene capacity rates in Western Europe. And again, it's brought out what it thinks is the exact, the exact answer from the featured snippet. And you can see actually within the snippet, if you read through it a bit, it's, we're talking about ethylene production capacity utilization rates. So, you know, the question, the kind of the, the clues, if you like, were in the, actually within the, um, uh, the search, uh, search clue itself. So capacity rates, so we found capacity rates, we found estimated around 96%, and we've, and we've brought that out of the featured snippet. But if we do another one here, which again shows this, um, even more, I think, here. So here we, we had said, so when did the DEA stop manufacturing ethylene products? And if you look again into the snippet, um, you can see that um, we've used the term ethylene byproducts, and it's brought out that the ethylene derivatives. And if you, um, we've stop manufacturing, and um, <coughs> I think it's, it, it has here that um, it, it kind of, it was production until early 2021. So there's a, there's a really is a sort of a lot of, um, power in this kind of vector search capability, this semantic search capability of being able, for it, being able to make connections between the search clue and you know, what, it, what, it should be, uh, <coughs> what it should be bringing back in terms of the, um, of the answer itself. And then I'll just one last example here, just to show how Well, we can kind of bring out, say it's a demo server and give it one last attempt. So yeah, sorry about that, but it's just connecting through to the demo server. But um, how we could actually just bring out the which country submitted this updated version. So it knew what essentially NPAAA was um, and also, you know, just brought out Latvia as the exact dam. <laughs> so this was the, um, the proof of concept, if you like, that we put together. This was the demonstration that we showed the, the guys at the, um, the publications office. And um, now what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk a little about how we did it. Um, so I'll give you some of the background here as to kind of, um, kind of what went on and how we, uh, how we put all the technology together to be able to uh, achieve this. So this is um, um, kind of a high level diagram, if you like, but it demonstrates the process that we had to go through to, to get to where we wanted to get, to get this kind of Google-like functionality. So um, we used our own um, um, Pure Insights discovery platform, which um, I suppose really encompasses a bunch of um, predominantly open source technologies into a single framework that um, enables to kind of reiterate um, on this, on this, um, 
on this process really, really well. So we do have um, sort of technology assets and um, the Pure Insights Discovery platform is, is one of those. So we hooked up to their data store over here, which was, remember, it was Oracle RDF um, via a connector. Um, and we brought it into our um, content processing pipelines. And here what we do is we kind of um, enrich that data. And uh, one of the things that um, um, we had to bear in mind is that um, the, the models that we wanted to use, um, and a lot of the other actually sort of um, you know, natural language processing, um, uh, large language models, have a kind of a, a limited attention span, which is down to about 512 tokens or 512 words. So we couldn't really um, just pass some of the large documents that were coming through from the, uh, yeah, the publications office are, um, uh, the database. So we, what we do is we, we actually chunk those documents uh, into kind of logical paragraphs, I suppose is the best way to, to put it, into uh, you know, around about the 512 word type capacity. So we have this kind of doc chunking process going on here where we, um, which is part of the, the pipeline processing um, to make it, uh, um, and also actually one of the things here is also we have to think about kind of logical location as well. So we did think about that and store that. So obviously we're going to chunk a document, we're going to take paragraphs out of it, but we might want to in, you know, in the future um, reconstitute that document. So we had to think about kind of a location as well as to where that came from so we could pull, pull things back together if we, if we needed to. So we did that and then we passed it through to a transformer model. In this case, it was um, Google BERT. Um, we used the, the Hugging Face framework. So the Pure Insights Discovery platform sort of hooks, hook, hooks into Hugging Face. And then you know, using Google BERT, we, um, we calculated and built the, the vectors for each of the chunks. And then we passed those through to Elasticsearch. So the dense vectors, um, dot chunks were in, indexed via Elastic. So that um, actually sounded quite simple, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was a very difficult process. Then on the other side, we at the query side. So we have to do something similar there, of course. So um, <clears throat> that we have a, a query API as people um, uh, put their natural language queries in. As well, we had to vectorize that, um, so we couldn't, you know, it, it just couldn't work from a keyword perspective. So we vectorized anything that looked like a question, uh, and then we did a cosine similarity or, or a dot product um, similarity check against the, um, the the vectors from the the document corpus against the query, and then we brought out um, what really are a kind of a number of candidate answers. So. Um, and that it could be it could be 25, it could be 10, it could be five candidate answers. And we, we, we're operating here at kind of a really low level. So what we do is we, we kind of have a score for a candidate answer, but we're not sure at this stage um, what's going to be the best answer, and also where that answer is located within uh, any any one of the chunks. So there's kind of a next stage, a next process that. Um, that we went through, and this is kind of, you know, we've learned this, I think um, maybe trial and error is not the best word for it, but um, it's a process that we've we kind of enabled to put together when we get the actual chunks, the, um, the text, and then here we request an answer from a Q&A model, and that, that Q&A model at this stage was actually um, uh, distilled BERT. So it's a lot quicker, um, and it was also um, very um, sort of, um, more, more refined and kind of targeted in, in what it did. Um, and then from that, what we can do then is we can take a look and do some processing and, and use some algorithms to try and figure out then which is going to be the best candidate and where the answer is within that candidate. And you can see over here some of the, the kind of graphs. So it might be maybe that the, you know, the first one in the, um, in the chain looks like it's a good candidate and then they diminish off. It could be that um, you know, there's quite a few across the top that um, are, are kind of good candidates. So you get this kind of profile. Um, and then we, we used algor an, an algorithm to look at that profile. And then also we call upon maybe other things as well to take a look at um, what was the source of the document. 
So um, did it come from an authoritative source, for example? And also um, uh, potentially the author. So, you know, is there an author there? Um, do, is, is, there is it an authoritative author? I mean, it could be that maybe, you know, extreme case, but maybe one of these is just kind of a, a temp file or a text file or something that's come through. Well, then it wouldn't kind of pass the, um, the kind of the compute answer and confidence score. It would, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would be kicked out at that stage. So we kind of filter and re-rank then. Um, and then from that, we're able to choose uh, an answer, highlight that answer within the chunk, and then render that out to the, uh, to the end user interface. So this is kind of a, um, a distilling process, a, a, a kind of a finer process. And then um, at a very high level, um, this shows something about the, the, the um, it's a very, very high level, but the platform that we have. So we could connect through to the content sources, one of which was Oracle RDF. Um, we have um, you know, a number of data repository type connectors that allow us to extract the, uh, the information from there. So the type of information that we're, we're taking from here would be um, obviously the document text itself, but also any container information. Maybe there's security, ACL, thread two, uh, and kind of metadata. You know, in the, in the um, uh, European Union Publications Office instance, it was anything that we thought that was gonna help us, you know, with this vectorization process. And then we put that into a document staging repository, um, which we tend to use a NoSQL type database for that. So, you know, maybe Mongo or similar. Within the staging repository then, we then pu push the content through into our content processing pipelines. So this is where we do the data enrichment, this is where we do the chunking. Um, we'll, we'll use um, you know, various technologies for that. Um, Yake is one that, uh, uh, kind of um, entity extraction, for example, we could use for that. Uh, Spacey, the NLP, natural language processing. Um, then over on the, on the right-hand side there, um, from the Hugging Face in, uh, framework, Google BERT, uh, Distill BERT, and also um, another technology we use called Mini uh, LML6, which we found to be, work very effective in these instances. We create the vectors from the content processing pipelines, and then we'll pass those through to um, the search engine, uh, which in this case was Elasticsearch, so the vectors are, uh, are stored within Elastic. Or that, well, although this, this didn't sort of form part of the, um, the, uh, the proof of concept with the, uh, the publications office, but we also um, have a, a knowledge graph alongside the search engine as well. <clears throat> so it could be here at the content processing stage that we could um, formulate um, those semantic triples. So we could um, um, look at nodes, etc., uh, look at the A triple and um, kind of populate the knowledge graph with that information as well. And then at the, uh, we have a query um, API, um, natural language query a API at the other end for query processing. Um, so as the query comes in, it could well be that um, you know, we'll just identify it as a keyword type search. So we'll push that through straight to the search engine, for example. If it comes through as a, um, uh, something that looks like a question, then we'll process that, create the vector, uh, and do the matching there with the, um, you know, with the search engine that stored the, uh, the, the document vectors from the content processing pipelines. Or it could be we identify it as something that, um, uh, you know, it, it looks like a semantic triple. So we could potentially then push that through to the knowledge graph and get a knowledge graph type, uh, type answer from that as well. So, yeah, that's the kind of the very, very high level um, kind of architecture for that. So, yeah, that um, brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you, Michael. Uh, do we have questions here? Oh, okay, we have also some online questions, so let's start from here. The closest one. Uh, for this POC, uh, thanks, thanks for the, the talk. Um, you. For this POC, did you deal with uh, multilingual document and queries? We did, yes, but we only um, um, we limited it to um, a number of languages. So I think it was English, French, 
and possibly Spanish at this point in time. Yeah, just to prove the concept. Yeah, great question though, because <laughs> that's going to be, you know, something that a bridge that needs to be crossed. Yeah. Okay, I will go with a question from uh, the online uh, viewers. Uh, I wonder if there uh, were certain question or prompt where the domain specific demo built by your team is working better compared to the result you get from Google search and why you went with, uh, you know, why you didn't use the Google search API and you decided to build this in-house? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, I mean, I think we, we, know, we, want, we wanted to um, keep it contained within the publications office of the European Union. So we wanted to use their existing um, search capability and really expand upon that. So that's, that's there. And also we only then are using or have access to the European Union's kind of data sets. So um, I think that was, um, you know, for me, that was the, the, the channel they wanted to go down rather than um, you know, expand upon what they had already and use the kind of semantic search capability that was uh, within Elastic. Yeah. Are there other questions from here? Hello. Um, so for the highlighting, did you just do string matching there, or like, is there part of the, um, I guess, AI platform that helps with that part? There's a part of the AI platform that helps with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, another online question. Um, how did you evaluate and analyze the retrieval performance of your semantic search beside the demonstrated LGTM? Oh, that's a good question. No, I don't, we haven't done that. <laughs> okay, that was a quick answer. Uh, the question. Thank you for the talk. Um, you. Can you tell more about the chunking? Uh, like, first of all, uh, were there other challenges except of um, for the size of the chunks? As I understood, you chunked uh, the text depending on the attention span of the model, so not to, to make them too big, but were there other challenges uh, for chunking of the documents and also how do you store these chunks so they kind of belong to the same uh, document in yeah, the index? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we had to more or less um, build a small application or an application, if you like, which we called the doc chunker. So we had to sort of think about how we were going to build that. The actual workings of that, um, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not a kind of, a, I'm a product person rather than a programmer person, so I couldn't really probably expand upon that. But all I know is, is that what they do is they, they look at um, a document, they, if the 512 sort of threshold, I mean, that's what it is now, I mean, probably, you know, further down the line, that's going to expand. And it was, I think it was a, a limitation around Google BERT at the time we put the proof of concept together. So I think what they do is they, they just literally go through, they look, they pick out the um, uh, 512 um, uh, kind of words, I suppose, from a, one of a better, better description, and then put a, a logical marker against that. So a, a, a kind of a reference or a, a marker as to where that's come out of the document. And they'll do the same then for the next, the next, the next. And then if we need to put that together again, we can use that sort of metadata, if you like, about the, the positioning of the document where it was, uh, the position of the chunk within the document where it was to reform it, to put it back together. But it's, um, it is a limitation at this particular point in time. So we had no choice, really. We had to, uh, we had to do that to get the IR models that we wanted to, to use to be able to work over the, uh, over the text. Another online question. Regarding we vectorize anything that looks like a question, mm. your words quoted, does that mean you distinguish queries before vectorization, keywords versus, yeah. versus questions? Yes, we do. So we, we do that in, the, um, in our query, uh, query API. So, um, yeah, I mean, we think, you know, we, we'll, we'll tend to look at what the, 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 um, the search clue is and we'll make a decision, if you like, as to whether or not we think that's a question or not. Uh, and if, we, if it is, then we'll, we'll go through a vectorization process. If not, then we'll just push it straight through to the search engine for, a, for an answer. Another from here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the talk. I was sure. wondering what is uh, coming below the answer. It wasn't shown in the in, in the in your uh, demo. So you, uh, the answer, but below that there's documents. And how how is that determined? Which documents are relevant towards that question? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. I think it's, we, we're just using the um, ranking mechanism within uh, Elasticsearch. Yeah, but then you probably don't want to include words like what is, etc., etc. Yeah. 
pick out the keywords from the query, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I hear what you say, yeah. I mean, what we're doing is, I suppose we're just identifying that featured snippet and we're pushing it to the top of the results search list and then the results search list are just kind of the organic search um, results that they normally get from the uh, from the answer itself. But I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, yeah. People tend to usually only look at the first thing, maybe, they but do, there's yeah. more behind, below. There, there is, yeah, 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 there is a lot more. And, um, and one of the things is, obviously, is that when the snippet comes back as well, you can see, um, you know, the document that it's come from. So, which is part of this kind of authoritative thing. So you could go down into the search results as well and find that document and open it and, you know, get the whole, um, the whole document to read through. Get more context, I suppose, about the answer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Okay, another one. Which model was used for the extractive question answering? Um, it was uh, BERT and Distill BERT. We have another question here. Uh, thanks for the uh, thanks for the talk. I have a question. Have you considered to hand over the embedding into like a API? I, I think OpenAI have a like embedding API, which which takes a sequence length of like eight thousand tokens, which you yeah. might not need to chunk in too much anymore, yeah. and you don't might need to do the candidate. Uh, selection and the re ranking yeah. anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which exactly. could much simplify your system architecture. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, um, you know, we're looking at, um, you know, open AI and, you know, GPT, like everybody else, really. And we're thinking, like, how does that fit into um, these types of scenarios? So definitely can see the, what that will, you know, what that will be. And that would then remove, like you say, the 512 limit. But it's, it's, it's kind of, um, you know, uh, I mean, if you look at kind of what's happening, I suppose, in the industry now, I mean, for me, the, um, the advent of generative AI is a real game changer for search. I mean, it's a real, you know, it is, it's, a, you know, it's an inflection point. And, but, that, you know, they'll, um, <coughs> for those kind of um, questions where there's a single authoritative answer, what is the capital of Germany? then a knowledge graph is a great place to go because there's no hallucinations there. It's your data. You know how it was built. You know the answer you're going to get back is going to be correct. And that's, you know, that, that's maybe the way you should do that. And it's a bit the same with, with featured snippets is that, okay, it's not, you know, it's not a generative answer, but it is, it's, an, it's a kind of an authoritative answer where you've actually highlighted the, um, the answer to, to the question within the, the snippet as well. And then there's another route where you can go out from the snippet to have a look at, at a particular document. With the kind of generative stuff, then you have to think about okay, well, it's really powerful, but it's you know it is creating an answer, and you have to think about well, how does that fit into the, the scenarios that we have? And one of the things that um, actually that we with we're thinking of doing is we're using that kind of um, pre-processing, if you like, to bring down um, to identify a, a document set that is. Um, authoritative, maybe from within the corpus of a, um, you know, an organization, and then maybe pass that over to uh, the likes of GPT-4, et cetera, so it can do its kind of generative stuff on that, which would then, um, you know, stop the kind of the hallucinations and maybe some of the, you know, you know, is not and not. Can it pick that up? We don't know yet, so, we, yeah. But a good, yeah, I agree. And I think that's coming down the line. I think that's... 512 is a restriction that we kind of have now when we're doing this, but very shortly it probably won't be. Yeah. Okay, we are uh, just in time to end the session here. Thank you, Hi. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you.